than God. He said, purported by the apostle, we are at the ostracizing of all things. We get treated like nobody cares and nothing, and we are nothing. Because people never understand you when you walk in the apostolic anointing. I'm not going to take time preaching this this morning. But the Father, you have this calling in your life. I'm going to tell you this. Prepare yourself for it. Because there's nothing like being in that first office in the church. You become public enemy number one. And here's the difference. The prophet is helping to build the church forward. But prophets see the difference between these two anointing. As a prophet, come here, baby. The governor is still in charge. Somebody said the governor in charge. As the prophet, he would say to my wife, this is going to happen in the future. The apostle is not going to say nothing about that until it's time for it to happen. Wow. Y'all ready for this. If you call that, clap your hands and give God praise. See, the, the apostle is the one who does now work. The prophet speaks to the future. The apostle reveals things that's already been done, but not yet known. These are hidden mysteries. And he, he told the apostle, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of God. But to others, you got to tell them in parables. Are y'all walking with me? If you sit in the office of the apostle, God is dealing with you on a daily basis. Revealing what he's going to do today. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me break that down for you. Let me break it down what that means. All of you in church this morning, you say this, amen. Amen. You are called from the foundations of the earth. God saved you before you knew it. He saved you before Junior left and you got mad. I thought I just would come to somebody. Look at it. Everybody mad at Junior. They just come by. No, Junior had to leave. If he wouldn't have left, he wouldn't have been here today. So, so, so. Oh, Jesus, that's good. So now, every one of our lives have been hidden in Christ. Y'all read the scripture? Your life has been hid away in Christ. You read the scripture? So all of our lives are already finished. We are really. There's nothing. Why was this man born blind, Jesus? There's, there's father said no. That was set up before the foundation of the world that God would be glorified. Your, your pain is the greatest purpose. Yes, yes. When God trusts you with a reason to glorify himself in you, it's very painful. Yes, yes, yes. He's not glorified in the dance. He's glorified when you have to bring out something that nobody else can help you with. I think I came to the wrong church here. Well, let me, let me, let me, see, that, see, when he sets you up for glory, he, he puts something in you. He puts something on you. He puts something in you that only him could remove. That's true. Come on. And after you pray and fast and everybody pray for the poor all on you, you can come to the realization, I need God to get me out of this. That's true. Come on, so let, let me just close this. I'm closing now. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me close. You and I, if you can hear me, I receive it, son. There go a miracle. Shut up. Y'all don't know his testimony. How many of y'all people have been shot twice and still living? <laughs> shot one, shot out twice, a hundred times and still living. Anyway, <laughs> let, me, let me in. Glory, glory, glory. So let me talk to you now. This is what you came to church for. Your life is already finished. Let me talk to you about God's kingdom and this government, how he works. All of us in here, our lives are, why do you think you made it through the last thing? Mm. Why do you think you're still here when you thought you wouldn't be? It's not your call. You thought that thing was going to kill you. Matter of fact, you did give up. And you're still trying to wonder why you're still in church. <laughs> oh, I'm the only one here like that. Y'all keep lying, now keep lying, keep lying. So, your life has already been finished. He called you, he chose you, he connected you. Everything of your life has already been spoken. It's already written. Watch this now, sit with me. That's why it's so important to understand the governor dealing with his, his apostle. Because when it's time for something to come forth, he's going to reveal it to the office of an apostle. Preach it, Carl So the apostle, the thing you heard about 10 years ago, they prophesied the coming of Jesus 400 years before he came. But it took an apostle to say, Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. Now it's time for this thing to come to fruition. Y'all ain't ready for this this morning. That's why the enemy is so secretly trying to get the apostolic voice of the church. Because all you can do is dance if you don't have an apostle pushing you forward. All you can do is get three points in a hoop and talk about a woman at the way. You don't have too many messages about that right now. Say amen. amen. You don't have 5,000 points about a woman at the well. Let me point this out to you. Let me point out. I don't like that. Get me some. So, 
the apostle then becomes connected to the governor. The governor's going to place in his spirit when it's time for your next breakthrough to happen. You already know it because you heard the prophet a long time ago. But when you sit up on an apostle, the apostle is going to say, now is the time. Amen. Glory to God. See, when the apostle speaks to you, it means that it's time. It ain't time to, it ain't time to negotiate it. It ain't time to procrastinate. When the apostle says this is going to happen, it, it should connect to a prophecy you had gotten before. Because all he's doing is speaking it to life. Amen. Yes. Am I losing you all? So the apostolic office then becomes that office that God's going to use to speak what's already done in your life into existence. But it's already written in the book of life. It's already ordained. But when you hear a voice from an apostle say, you are the Christ, you know that the time is nigh. Yeah. It's now this thing is going to happen. Uh -huh. See, there's a lot of things that's written. That been, it was written about Jesus coming. Isaiah said, he's going to come. He was born of our transgressions, bruised by iniquity. But nobody knew who was the Christ until an apostle identified. This is the one. Yeah. If you walk with me, say amen. So those things that have been written, those things are not yet understood. See, the, the, see here's the thing about the apostolic ministry. The, the apostle lived on revelation. His ministry is a ministry of revelation. You wonder why you think it's because I'm so good that every time you come to church on Sunday, there's another revelation? That ain't got nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with works. It goes with the office and my, with my ability to submit to the will of God. Because the, the, the apostle's ministry, every time the apostle opens his mouth, he should be revealing something that's going on right now, what God is doing now. Right. Y'all walk with me now. It's a ministry of revelation. Those things that have been hidden are now coming to light. Those things that could not be understood. You read them, but you couldn't understand them because it was not yet, they were not due time. Amen. See, you could get a lot of things in your life and you could hear it, but if it's not due time, it's not going to happen. Right. Walk with me here now. Are you still walking with me? So your healing is in due time. Yes. Your deliverance, you know how many years I had to listen to God has already delivered you from drugs? You know how mad I used to get at people? You, come on, somebody say amen. You know how mad I used to get my life falling apart? They say, yeah, but you already delivered. The Lord's appointed your job delivered. I, I, I can't get back to that. Yes. Deliver me right now, you God. Oh, I'm sorry, you deliver me now. But the day was appointed. If I had been delivered one week before he delivered me, you wouldn't be here. Glory to God. Shonda. Kondo It's appointed. It's appointed. It's in your destiny. You need to be connected to the voice of God who can tell you what to do, when to do it. Am I losing it? So now the governor gave for the apostle to bring to life things that were known but not yet revealed. That's why the word, the word opens up to us this way. When you pray for me, don't pray like I'm so smart. Ain't nobody smart enough to preach this stuff. Ain't no human being on the face that I can learn this stuff. It has to be revealed. Yes. You hang around somebody who's taking God's glory. That's on you. But I'm telling you, as for me, this thing is revealed as you walk. And it's normally revealed to much torment. Can I give you a tip? When you're under pressure, something is about to come. This revelation came to, for this message came to much torment, much sleepless nights, crying all in the middle of the night, asking God to give me peace in the midst of all this. I don't think I can talk like this, but church folk. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, see, you had a revelation, but it was birth in darkness. It was worth you with me standing there and saying, I still believe God. When my mind had convinced me that I had lost and everything was given up and God had forgotten me, I had to sit there and say, Miss Bezos, I still believe him. I'm going to still spoke the scripture. I know it looks like I'm losing and nobody can. I'm still, I still, I still. Somebody heard, I still believe God. Somebody said, I still believe him. Oh, hell breaking loose, but I still believe him. Don't understand, but I still believe him. You have some two o'clock in the morning. You got to be able to tell that devil, I still believe God. I hear you, but I still. Yeah. It ain't easy to deal with this one. Uh, someone's happening.